Hello and welcome again to the next in a series of videos, tutorials on using um, NIST DTSA2. Um, today we're going to do a more advanced uh, quantitative analysis. So in this analysis we're going to look at um, a fairly complicated unknown and we're going to use standards that have uh, some uh, uh, serious challenges associated with them. The primary standard is going to be uh, Benidoite which uh, it has, has uh, two serious overlaps associated with it. First of all, uh, barium and titanium have an overlap in the uh, barium L and titanium K regions. And then uh, titanium also has an overlap with the oxygen K. And so um, the, at first uh, blush this might seem to be a poor choice of standard. But of course, um, in this particular case, the standard happens to match quite well with the unknown. And so it is, in fact, a, probably a good choice in terms of uh, uh, getting an accurate quantification. So there's some other elements in there, too, that we're going to be considering. There's uh, uh, zinc and uh, zirconium and, and uh, magnesium. And so uh, um, what we're going to do, our strategy is going to be to uh, take uh, standards um, collected from um, uh, these materials and then we're going to uh, um, convert them uh, into uh, standard bundles uh, because uh, uh, to make use of the Benidoite we're going to have to include some additional data in with that standard. These are what we would call references. And these are uh, essentially the way that we deconvolve the overlaps in the Benidoite uh, so that we can make use of it as a standard. Um, so that you can follow along with the example, I've made available a, uh, a zip file containing all the necessary spectra and one additional file, the uh, definition, the detector definition. Um, this detector definition uh, you should probably uh, extract somewhere uh, convenient and uh, let's see, we'll put it on my desktop and then import using file import or file preferences file preferences and then instrument and detectors and you get an instrument and import detector so uh, selecting that, going to your desktop, and picking that, and then clicking open will import that into your detector definitions. And then you can go ahead and use that um, uh, as the definition for the uh, spectra. You'll find one detector definition called STD medium, comma, 4096, and that's the one that you should use to uh, perform these analyses. So I'm not going to do it because I've already got it in here, but that's what you would go ahead and do, and you would use uh, these particular um, spectra. You can also export them onto uh, into a folder on your uh, desktop or somewhere, and uh, follow along as I perform this uh, quantification. So let's take a look inside a, a typical spectrum file. Now there are many different formats of spectrum file and some of them are binary so you can't really look at them. Some of them are text-based so we can. Uh, I'm going to look at the uh, ISO uh, standard uh, uh, MSA, MAS uh, spectral data file format that's um, uh, one that's available from all the vendors and so uh, you can always export your spectra in this format. It's a text file. Uh, it looks something like this. Uh, basically, it has uh, rows uh, with the various different pieces of information, things like the number of EV per channel, essentially 10, the offset, eventually, essentially zero uh, offset in, in uh, EV. Um, the units are given here. And um, it has various other pieces of information, some of which are required but uh, most of which are actually optional. So uh, one of the um, uh, pieces of information that really needs to be in there is the live time. So that's the uh, amount of time the detector was available to collect um, data. And that's uh, smaller than the real time, 
which was actually the time that expired on the wall, clock on the wall. A piece of optional information that's very important is the probe current. And um, you can actually include other pieces of information. Uh, DTSA2 has defined some special tags that are identified by these double hashes. This is part of the standard that you can add special uh, custom items using the double hashes. And in fact, some of the vendors also do this. But some of the additional information you can add into the spectrum are things like the, the uh, composition of the material from which the spectrum was collected. So um, in the ideal world, uh, you, all the necessary data would be in the file, and all that data would be correct. Um, what we're going to go and do is show you how, if some of this information is missing, that you can add it into the file using uh, the DTSA2 software. So you really never need to edit one of these files directly. So here is um, that one of the spectrum files we're going to use as a standard. Uh, if we go through the spectrum properties, many of these properties are the same thing that we could have read out of the file. Uh, energy scale, energy offset, um, live time, uh, probe current. Um, it's missing certain pieces of information though and we can go and we could just go and right click over top of that file and we could edit the spectrum properties. And you can see that uh, it would allow us to update or add various pieces of information. Um, you can specify the probe current that was measured before the spectrum was acquired, a second probe current that was measured after the spectrum was acquired, live time, beam energy, working distance. Um, you can also provide various different pieces of contextual information. The most important stuff is the stuff over here. You can also specify what material this spectrum came from. So you can do that by right-clicking and selecting Assign Material, in which case we can specify that it came from Benidoite, which is Barium Titanium SI309, like that. Um, either way, it doesn't really matter. If it's in the database, uh, it'll give you the same results, essentially. Um, OK, so now when you select that particular spectrum, you see that the composition is displayed down here. And uh, it's also recorded in here as standard composition. There are two different types of compositions can be associated with a spectrum. There's a measured composition and there's a standard composition. So what we just assigned was the standard composition. So now we understand about how um, the information about the spectrum is stored in the spectrum data file and how you can go about editing it. We're now really ready to go ahead and quantify this uh, spectrum, the K240 class. So to do that, we're going to need to provide a number of standards. And so we're going to use this Benitoite as one of the standards. We're going to use the magnesium, zinc, and zirconium as, as our other standards. So that's providing uh, barium, titanium, silicon, and oxygen, zirconium, zinc, and magnesium. So. Um, to make this easier, what we're going to do is we're going to make sh uh, ensure that each of all the correct information is included that's needed to do this quantification in a single uh, file. And to do this, we are going to uh, create what we call standard bundles. So a standard bundle, you select a spectrum, or if you have multiple spectra from the same material, you can actually multiply select the, all of those spectra and uh, sum them up to make a single bundle, but we'll just do this with one today. So we'll make a standard bundle. Now we've already assigned the material for that for this. Um, so it knows that it's uh, Benito White. Uh, we know that it has these elements in it. 
uh, we know that the probe dose was this and that the beam energy was this. So this, all the information on this page looks good. However, when we go over here, we notice that there were those interferences which were going to require references. And so uh, it tells us we need a reference for the titanium L family and for the titanium K family for the oxygen K, essentially all the lines, and the barium L family. So we're going to have to provide spectra that act as references for these. So for the two titanium ones, um, titanium being a fairly easy uh, material to get standards from or reference spectra from, we're just going to use a pure titanium for that. And it's asking us what elements are contained in that titanium. Because as a reference, we really don't need to know what the composition of it is, but we do need to know that it doesn't have any interferences that would cause us problems. So uh, it's titanium. We've selected titanium. For oxygen, we have a couple of choices amongst the spectra available, MgO or SiO2. I'm going to choose SiO2 and specify that it has silicon and oxygen in it. And finally, for the barium, barium's a little bit difficult, uh, so we're just going to use Sanbornite, which is a mineral which contains barium, silicon, and oxygen. Barium, silicon, oxygen. Okay, so now we've specified references for all the interferences in this particular standard. Now we're going to save this away. So when we save it, it gets saved to a file type that's a, a DTSA2 standard bundle is the type. And typically, the default name is like this. And I recommend that you keep this. It tells you what the element that's the standard for. So this is going to be the oxygen standard. And it's using bonitoite. So we save that away. And it's going to ask us a second time. Now it's for the silicon standard for bonitoite. Third one is titanium standard. And fourth is barium. So we've actually created four files now, one for each of the elements in this material. And uh, um, then it's going to finally ask us if we want to save away the, uh, uh, the, the, the raw data as a uh, uh, EMSA file like this. And uh, uh, you can go ahead and do that too. So. We've created one stand or four standard bundles from one spectrum. We're going to go ahead and repeat that process. It's going to be a lot more uh, straightforward for the pure elements. So right-click on zirconium, make standard bundle. We're going to say that it is pure zirconium, like that. And um, because it's a pure element, there's no need for references, so it won't tell you. It'll say nothing here, no requirements here, and we can save that away. And it says zirconium standard, pure zirconium. And again, it saves the EMSA file too. Repeat again for zinc. Go as quickly through this again as possible. Zinc. Um, turns out that this edit box can actually parse. Uh, materials. Um, again, no reference requirements, so we're good. And the final one is for magnesium standard bundle. The advantage of making standard bundles, even for pure elements, is that uh, it essentially guarantees that all the correct, all the necessary information is in there. All right, so we've gone ahead and done that. So now we can actually clear all of these out of here, because we won't be using them directly. We're going to use them off the disk. So I go ahead and I select my spectra that I want to quantify. Go up to Tools, Quant Alien, and we're going to select the top option, Determine the Composition of an Unknown Spectrum by MLSQ Fitting to Standards. Um, and this data should all be correct. It's this information here. And now we're going to go ahead and collect and uh, select the standards that we just created. So for barium, we're going to use the bonitoite standard, magnesium, essentially all these uh, standard files. We're just going to open them up. 
and the red in. All the information should now be uh, correct in here. Uh, should specify the element it's being used for, probe current, live time, and the composition of the standard. And so this is all correct now. Uh, because we've provided an oxygen standard, we there is no extra element we need to worry about. So we're not doing oxygen by stoichiometry, we're actually measuring it. When we get over to this page, this page is where uh, we've saved ourselves a lot of work. We've already entered in a reference for the titanium L family. And so it is read out of the standard bundle. We've already entered a, a reference in for the oxygen K. It's read out. And for these other elements, we don't need a reference. But if the one was needed, it would be read out of the standard bundle. So usually, if you use standard bundles, you can step right through this without any extra effort. Now, you can specify lines to quantify, or you can just use auto. I'm just going to go with auto. And um, we finally get an opportunity to make sure that all the information is correct in the unknown spectra. If it wasn't, you could go over here, select it, and edit the properties like that. Fortunately enough, this is good. So go on to the next page. And uh, we get our results. So um, my first thing is I look at the analytical total, the sum, and those look reasonable, um, within plus or minus a percent or two of, uh, of unity. So uh, my initial inclination is that the, 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 the quant went reasonably well. My second ch check, of course, is to look at the residual. And so I'm actually going to clear all the lines because they kind of confound things. But if we look at the residual, we can see that it looks pretty clean in here. Um, there is one line in here that we've kind of missed, and that is this uh, abarium M line. And that's because, uh, in this particular instance, we're not using the M lines. We're sort of ignoring the M lines of barium in this quant. So um, that peak would be uh, removed if we were looking at that. Uh, again, for the other one, similarly good-looking residual. So that suggests things went well. Finally, go take a look at the report. We get our, our output, uh, all the information about the standards that were used, the references that were used. Um, and then um, this table provides us a summary of all the output results. So to make it easier to look at, I'll open it in, in a web browser. And now we can go down to the bottom here and look at our results. And um, typically, these are the numbers I would copy out. So in general, um, this shows you how you would go about uh, quantifying a spectrum using a complex standard like uh, the Benitoite. Um, So that's all the basics you need to know to uh, build uh, standard bundles and then uh, use them to uh, quantify um, spectra. Um, there are some details which I glossed over in this uh, particular presentation to keep it short. Um, discuss those elsewhere. There are things like uh, uh, the uh, uh, why references are necessary and um, how you go about uh, specifying uh, which lines um, a detector will use or are uh, considered visible to a specific detector. Um, these will be covered in other videos, so uh, look online for those. Thank you for your attention. I hope this has been helpful.